Call the meeting to order, uh, 6.02 p.m. on the 29th of September. Uh, just give me two seconds to find the agenda that I, there we go. Uh, meeting minutes from September 8th. Anybody got any, uh, have any uh, comments? Nope. Hearing none, uh, roll call vote to approve. Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Approved. Uh, vendor payroll warrants. Anybody uh, have any uh, any yeah. comments? No comments from me. None from me. Okay, good. That's done. Jeez, uh, you guys are going fast. Keep up. Kind of keep up here, Brian. <laughs> I know, right? Um, uh, public comment for any item not listed on this agenda. I see one person from the public. Mm -hmm. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are um, you? Yeah, uh, yeah, my name is Doc, and uh, I'm a reporter for The Reminder, and I'll be covering the meeting. Great. And uh, so everything will be on the record. Great. I appreciate you letting us know. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks Welcome. for being here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and my name is spelled E. D no, I'm kidding. Um, chairman, <laughs> exactly. Honorable. Um, no, that's, that's not, um, okay. that's the mean, that's the minimum Mr. <laughs> Edwards is to get your name spelled right. <laughs> we, we, we like to a, bring a little levity a to this meeting at, at times. So, um, yeah, great. okay. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you very much for, for uh, introducing yourself. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, there are no scheduled appointments. So Brian old business, uh, <laughs> the administrative assistant position. Sure. Um, so uh, Amy and I interviewed um, Amy LaValle for the administrative assistant position last week. Um, Ms. LaValle is a resident of Waitley. Um, she has a lot of uh, administrative experience, mostly in medical offices, um, but she's looking for part-time work that matches up with what we're looking for. So uh, my recommendation would be that um, that we appoint Amy Lo Valley for the administrative assistant position. How many um, hours? Okay. Um, it's 24 hours a week. And then we have the 108 hours that float around uh, mostly for budget season. Okay. Questions by anybody? Nope. No, I, um, this is for Amy's old job, right? Yep. Amy too. We'll have Amy number one and Amy number two. Okay. Oh, All right. Depending on, you know, who's friendlier to me. I was going to say, it's one not or, gonna... or, or you just change your name to Amy. And... Maybe. We won't have a problem. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, it's kind of, sort of like George Foreman, you know, all his sons. Right. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'd hear a motion. Uh, I'll move that we uh, appoint Amy to the administrative assistant. Well, all right. Well, we, um, offer, we offer the position. We offer the position. Yeah. I'll okay. second that. Voice vote for um, for approving Amy Lavalley as the administrative assistant. We're offering her that position. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me? Yes. Unanimous. Congratulations to Amy, assuming she takes the position. Um. Okay, we've got uh, appointment to the Cultural Council, Paula Jenkins, Perrine uh, Munier jones and Nance Riffenberg. Uh, all appointments to the Cultural Council. Brian, I assume that these three individuals are aware they are being appointed? Good. As far as I know, uh, according I think to Nancy Tulanian, yeah. they are. <laughs> that's a low bar, but yes, they're all aware. <laughs> you gotta walk before you can run or crawl before you walk. Um, that, no, that's great. Um, do I hear a motion? Uh, I would move that we, uh, appoint Paula Jenkins, uh, Perrin Munier-Jones and Nance Riffenberg to the Culture Council to fill those three vacancies. I second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Old business is concluded. New business. Um, to discuss and vote to appoint a select board representative to negotiate an agreement with Union 38 teachers and instructional assistants 
associations. Now, to clarify this, and this is something that Brian reminded me of, this is not necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, this is not to necessarily appoint one of us to the negotiating committee. This is if one of us wants to be a, be nominated because there is one select board member from Franklin County select board select boards that are appointed. Is that accurate, Brian? Uh, so there's so there's three negotiations that are going to be taking place in relatively short order. Um, uh, Franklin Tech. So that's Jonathan. That's the the letter that was sent to you. Okay, I apologize as the chairperson. Okay. Um, the nineteen. The 19 uh, participating communities of Franklin Tech send a representative to the meeting on October 15th. And originally I had thought that it was the select board chairs that, that were supposed to be sent and the select board chairs made the decision, but uh, I was corrected and it's actually the, uh, the, the school committee chairperson who makes the decision, but it's a single representative from the 19 communities. Um, so that's Franklin Tech. That doesn't require any any really select board action on, on the part of the board. Uh, the one we're talking about here is for the Whitley Elementary School negotiations. Got it. Okay. Uh, they'll be negotiating a, a three year agreement, and there's a representative from Wait us uh, a representative from the Whitley Select Board that's appointed to go to uh, work, uh, participate on the negotiations team with the with a representative from the Whitley School Committee. Okay. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on who our representatives should be? Um, I don't mind uh, sticking with that. Um, they, I think we're well ahead of the deadline for the next contract, like at least a year and a half. Um, so it's a little ways out. Um, this particular group has not been fond of letting people participate remotely. Um, I hope that is changing in the future, even after we're allowed in-person meetings. I really want them to adopt the, the law to allow remote participation. There's been some resistance to that, though, and it made it really hard for me to participate in the meetings until the pandemic hit. And then I was at every single meeting because they, they have the meetings like during the late afternoon, like after school is out and before the superintendent goes home which I completely understand and I, and I get that and the teachers don't want to wait three hours and have an evening meeting either. Um, but uh, so that's what I would say about that is I, I have been, uh, they, they're very aware of my preference for being able to participate remotely. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm fine with that. But if there's somebody there here, like Fred or John, if you are itching to get involved in something school related, then I would step aside. I, I went to a frontier capital committee last night. So yeah. that that's my school. That's your school thing involvement for now. Yeah. I think okay. probably that's um, using our skills wisely to put you on that school related committee. And I can be on this school related committee and John Scott, I was so many things on his plate. I, I have I have no need to be on the negotiating committee in, in any way. Um, but my question, Brian, to you, if you know, would be when are they anticipating these negotiations to kick off? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I it guess past us anything to go by about a year before the they need the contract. They'll, that's when they'll start having lots of meetings. Um, so it might be a few more months before. I have to start or I, I get asked to go to meetings anyway. Be, because to, to address your, your concern, Joyce, in the short term, I believe we passed a, a, a restriction on in-person meetings, and that goes for any meeting in, uh, in, in Waitley, which includes mm -hmm. meetings of, of school committees. Right. And they, and, and they are abiding by that, but I'm anticipating that in half a year, that ban might not be here. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. If I can ask, who, what is the composition of the negotiating committee? What who oh. are the members? Well, um, voting members. I don't know. I, I might be wrong on voting members. I don't think voting the members has a superintendent is there, but does not necessarily have a vote. 
the um, the business manager is there, does not necessarily have a vote though. Um, and there we have an attorney uh, who's our negotiator. Um, then each of the towns sends someone from the select board and there is at least one, maybe two from the school committees. Um, I think there's, from Waitley, there was one. From Sunderland, there was, yeah, I think that basically it's one from the select board and one from the school committee. Um, there might be another like ad hoc member that I'm- Okay, remember. is this for Waitley Elementary or for Frontier? We, we it is for the four you know, elementary. It's for the four elementary. So it's okay. one contract for the four elementary. Okay. And then we technically negotiate two contracts, one for the teachers and one for the non-unionized, uh, like classroom assistants, uh, cafeteria folks, the, the non-unionized um, staff. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I will make a, a motion to appoint uh, Joyce Palmer Fortune um, as the Wheatley representative to the elementary school uh, Teachers and Instructional Assistant, Assistance Associations um, Negotiating Committee. I will second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. All right. Uh, letter from the Mass DOT dated the 22nd of, of September, requiring the town to close the bridge on Christian Lane over the Mill River or alternatively reduce the bridge to a single lane of traffic. Um, I will admit this gave me significant pause. I'm shocked. I'm not shocked. I am <laughs> nervous. Mm -hmm. This is going to impact, obviously, Christian Lane traffic. It is going to dramatically uh, impact Swamp Road traffic. Yep. Um, yep. And I don't think any of us truly realize how much traffic goes up and down those two roads in any given day. Because we are a commuter town. A pass-through town, if you will. Yeah. So the toll will be going up on Swamp Road within the next month. I think we get a big old green ogre to sit at that bridge. Um, I, I am personally in favor of making it a one-lane road. I, I, I shake in my kids to think about closing Christian Lane. Um. But Brian, is there a plan that coincides with this to begin? No, there's not. I mean, let, let's be clear. There's not a plan to start fixing this. They're just saying close it. And now we then we have to create a plan to fix this. Accurate? Right. 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 So so the plan right now that, that Keith has in place is that it will it will be uh, reduced to a single lane bridge. Um, and it will be posted at the at the weight. I don't think the weight uh, posting is changing at all. Uh, but it's going to be reduced to a single lane bridge. It's going to have uh, alternating traffic. Um, it will it will likely be um, there likely be yield signs. Uh, keep that in discussion with Mass DOT uh, because it's a straightaway and there's uh, the sight distance. You can see quite uh, quite a ways in distance. Uh, they didn't feel that they needed to have um, the traffic cars, light uh, car stopping or, or having the traffic light. Um, so that's the plan. It will, it will be reduced to a single lane. In terms of uh, Keith was going to have some discussions with Mass DOT, with the um, you know the, the people who did the bridge rating. Um, he thinks there may have been similar repairs on a bridge done. I don't remember. It was a nearby town, um, but that's I mean that's the beginning of the process, right? Um, we're going to need to figure out if it needs to be if it needs to be repaired or if it can be repaired um, or if it needs to be replaced. And we need to figure out what the cost of both, uh, both of those options are. And we'll need to make a decision based on, you know, on, on what we find out. Um, the bridge is, uh, we've talked about this in the past, that the bridge is the oldest one in town that hasn't been replaced. Um, so at some point, the day's coming where we're going to need a new bridge there. Uh, maybe it's coming sooner than we would have liked, but um, I have sort of put the feelers out to FERCOG in terms of their transportation staff, in terms of money that may be available, um, and they were going to look into that. Um, but in, in the meanwhile, this is what 
mass DOT is requiring the town to do. So um, this is going to be on the magnitude. And, and Joyce, I think you were on the board then. Um, this is going to be of the scale of the bridge replacement on Hayden, Haydenville Road at, at uh, Conway Road. Or I'm sorry, at, yeah, Conway Road, what, a dozen years ago? Something like that? The bridge on Haydenville Road, or not, not, the, not the bridge on Conway Road up by Paul's house? No, the, the, no. the, bridge, that, the bridge that goes in front of Adelia's house. That right. Bridge, that one didn't take all that long, though, because we closed be, because at one point it got closed and they and they had to go in the water. Um, but it, mm. it, it was quick because it, it got closed at one point. And traffic was rat, routed around in, into Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it was a it was a major repair that cost a lot of money. Yeah. Do we have any it was on the report? Was there any idea of what the nature of the problem is at the moment? I mean, general age, but the specifics. Um, I, this doesn't mean much to me. It said deteriorated exterior timber piles, um, mm. which to me, I think is the like the thing you know, the holding the bridge at up. the banks, right? Yeah. The things that yeah. are holding the, the, the bridge up. Um, I, I, I don't want to take a guess as to yeah. what it's going to cost, but bridges are not cheap um i think the only thing that the town has going for it is that it, it it's in a pretty good it's in pretty good shape financially and it has very little debt so um yeah brian will the will the one lane allow for truck traffic or will truck traffic need to be detoured um so it's going to be a, a 12 foot wide travel lane um so we'll have some sort of signage that says if your if your truck is over twelve feet, you should go by. As, as far as the group. weight goes, I think they're recommending keeping the same sign, so yep. that the weight won't change. Right. Yeah. So, which to me doesn't make that much sense. No, it doesn't. I I, 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 I don't. I kept my mouth shut, but yeah, I just like I don't uh, get it. Unless one side of the bridge is weak. And they have to avoid that side. I, I mean, I, I think. I think I saw that everything has to go to the north side of the bridge. Yeah. So maybe it's the south side that's weak. Right. Maybe if, I, I mean, to me, if 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 the way to get a bridge fixed quickly is to have the road closed, then I'd like to at least consider that option although I, I mean i don't know that that will make money flow faster what made money yeah, flow faster so. for the bridge on haydenville road i mean it's it was 15 freaking years roughly for us to get the williamsburg road bridges taken care of and it was like pushing and pushing and pushing now those are not as heavily traveled um but i don't i guess i don't understand who was it that complained about the Haydenville Bridge that got the funding in place? Because it's clearly it's, it, this is going to be more than we as a town can afford. I'm sure whatever the state is going to require us to replace it with, they're going. It's going to be great, but it's going to be ten times more than we can afford. <clears throat> so I think we really have to assume that we're going to have to get aid from somewhere else. And I know keeping the keeping it open as a one lane bridge is certainly um, kind of the, the best option for local traffic. Um, but, you know, I think, it, are the truckers gonna complain? Who's gonna do the complaining that actually gets something done about this? I know if we complain, that's, I know they, they jump right to it when the Board of Selectmen and Whateley gets it, you know, puts their letters into the uh, state DOT, but. Who else needs to complain about this to make it move? And, and you know, if, if money is right now falling from the sky for infrastructure, how do we catch some, enough of that in some buckets to, uh, to make this happen quickly? I guess those are my questions, which don't really have answers, but, um, you know. That's, the, the, the money isn't flying from the sky quite yet. I'm right, sure. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. The Give forecast it, is for money to be falling from the skies on infrastructure. Yeah, the forecasts are sometimes wrong. Something? 
call call Jim McGovern and, and uh, make sure he, he 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 votes to get that money flowing by hooker. Right. Um. So I guess Joyce, my my response would be that if we're going to be told what to do eventually, I'd rather be proactive, close, and because we don't have a plan right now. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we have to do something about it. Right. Close Immediately. The, the, the side yeah. of the bridge that they want closed with with keeping the arrow in our quiver that we may decide to close the whole thing if that expedites repair, replacement repair, whatever you want to call it. But until until we know what possibilities exist and what funding streams exist, I, I think we probably need to just move forward on, on closing the lane yeah. that is required to be closed as a stopgap measure, yeah. and that might be, that might buy us some time too. Right. I think with the information we have today, that's the logical choice. Right. But doesn't mean I don't, that I don't that think we've got any real choice aside from closing the one, you know, make it one lane for now. Right. Uh, yeah. But, but you know, with no plan right. in place to replace it, I wouldn't want to close it all yeah. ent entirely now. Right. I, I did think for a little while about the possibility of could you make it a one way street, let Swamp Road also be a one way street so that Swamp Road and Christian Lane presumably would get even amounts of traffic that way. It'd be a pain in the butt and people have to learn new things. And that's why that wouldn't work. But it would uh, uh, there's a th thought that crossed my mind. And a good thing I'm not like in charge of traffic in the town. Or else, you know, you'd have all kinds of crazy things happening. I, I, I think I think having a conversation with a couple of traffic engineers will probably be the uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> my, I suspect their ideas are going to like go over better than than mine would. But I'm just I just had to, I had to put that out there because I because I do feel for the Swamp Road folks who are going right. to be taking the brunt of whatever traffic has to detour because they can't go over that bridge. And and I guess my question to Keith would be. Why not the weight reduction if the real problem, maybe the real problem is it's fine with the weight we have as long as there's not two trucks on there at the same time. And if it's a two lane road, you could have two trucks on there at the same time. Maybe that's the reason I can think of there, right. You know, there could be some reasons, but nobody who's on the call to the best of my knowledge, unless Chris Larrabee is a, uh, is an expert on roads would probably know the answer to why it is <laughs> why it is that that the the weight limit doesn't change well and 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 to magnify that a little bit you know we've all lived in this town long enough i've been on christian lane now for you know 35 40 years whatever it's been and uh 35 and i gotta tell you i can't recall one time where two trucks were on that bridge simultaneously mm -hmm. so yep all right so Brian, what true, true, but on the one if all it takes is one time. Fair, mm -hmm. yeah. So it what sounds like we, we need to vote on this. Well, I'm wondering what the timing would be. Would he, would he do it immediately, Brian? Um, so we have to. So we have to respond to Mass DOT by uh, April, October fifteenth. Um, so Keith is going to be. Um, He's already made some plans to get some additional Jersey barriers from Mass DOT, and they're they're getting the signs that they need to do it. So once those signs are ready and he has the the barriers, he's going to do it. Okay. okay. So when we get some more information, huh? should we have ask Keith to a meeting and sort of get bounce things off of him to see what our options are? Yeah, I mean, so so really, I I think right now we need to start, and I'll have discussion about Keith about with Keith about this, but we need to figure out what steps we need to take to figure out what steps we need to take. <laughs> right. We need to figure out the condition of the bridge and, and whether it's a repair or whether it's a repair or a replacement. And I mean, maybe that's going to cost money to hire an engineer to do that. I don't know. Um, okay. Well, and then the other thing that I want to make in, in the in the in the very near term, I want to make sure that we do everything humanly possible to make sure that we get the word out that the road is going to be a one lane road before the day prior to the day before the lane become road becoming a one lane road. 
I, 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 we need to yeah. amplify this. We need to publicize it. Yeah, I, I talked to Jim uh, the other day about moving one of those signs up there saying, essentially mm -hmm. coming soon, one lane road, one lane bridge. Um, well, and, and getting find alternate way. routes. Electronic social media, print media. Yeah. You know, once we find out the date, we should publicize that date. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, is, is this, does this require a motion? I can't imagine it doesn't. No? Okay. Good. So it's Keith's fault. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keith built the bridge 100 years ago. Exactly. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's entirely possible that one of his family members did. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. All right. Um, could, I, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, a little background. Uh, how aware were you that there was tr problems with the bridge? I mean, how far back have you had warning signs? Um, this is the bridge. Are the bridges are inspected annually? So it was a little bit of a shock. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that, and that's that's a that's a that's a digging into D, mass dot. You know, the people on this call aren't aren't gonna aren't gonna be aware of that of that uh, of that information. I don't believe. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. And I'll hope get the word out about this. Thank you. Thank but you. again, we don't have a date specific yet, Doc. So you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Brian, wasn't there a date on their report that something had to be done by? Was it the 15th? Yeah, we have to know. We have to yeah. uh, notify. We have to respond. We have to respond in writing, confirming our action, not later than October 15th. Right. It doesn't mean that we take the action by the 15th, but it means we have to notify of the action by the 15th. Well, no, if it said notify. Completed by October 15th, yep. That, what action has been taken? So we have to do whatever it is by the 15th. Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Um, next up on the hit parade, to discuss and vote to sign the co-holder documents for the Sobieski Agricultural Preservation Restriction previously approved at the most recent annual town meeting. Yep. So this is a um, an APR, Agricultural Preservation Restriction. It's a it's a permanent restriction on the property. Um, it's approximately just uh, approximately 20 acres on River Road. Um, it's just south of um, uh, Pachesnik's uh, 5J Creamy there. Um, mm -hmm. On the west side, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So... Uh, $10,750 was approved in CPA funds at the annual town meeting. And this is just the paperwork to, to pay the, the, the town share of the APR. Okay. okay. We don't need a motion for this. We just need signatures. Yeah. I was just wondering if you, anybody had any questions first. No? No. No, this is pretty clear from town meeting. Who wants to make it's a motion? It's clear from town meeting and we don't have any authority to amend the document. I'm just making sure that people feel the right to speak nope. <laughs> motion yeah i think it would be good to do a motion just for the record yeah okay uh, i move we sign the documents i second all those in favor joyce aye fred aye me yep yeah. renewable liquor licenses and other select board issued licenses and whether to grant any covid 19 hardship fee reductions so if you'll recall last year, um, we included link. So license renewals are on a calendar year, liquor license and common victuallers and all the other licenses that are granted by the select board are on a calendar year basis. So we're gonna be sending out renewal letters um, very soon. Um, and last year in the renewal letters, the board had language that said, Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Waitley Select Board will entertain license fee reduction requests from licensees that can demonstrate they experience an economic hardship. Please submit a uh, letter to the Select Board's office for Sandy Lane uh, that describes the hardship you experienced and your request. Um, so the question is, 
does the board want to continue to make that offer um, for the licenses or are we going to return to what we've always done in the past? We have full capacity in all establishments available at this point, correct? Yes, pretty sure. Like under those conditions, I'd be, I'm fine with going back to what we've done in the past. Yeah, we can remove that wording from the letters and. You know, the reality is people always have the option to come to us and, 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 and make a case for a reduction, but I don't think we have to overtly invite it at this point. If things change and we all of a sudden have have closures, then we can revisit it. But no, if, if everything is uh, can legally reopen at this point, I see no point of reduction. Though I note the Castaways, for instance, has not reopened. Right, that's by their choice. Right, I I, I know. Yeah. Don't aren't there some restrictions or annual reporting? Uh, requirements that we put on Castaway? That that's only if they're open. Okay. I, I think I think in the in the in the Castaways case, I mean, this is I'm ninety percent sure I'm right, but ten percent is always there. Um, I, I I don't think that they need to if they don't pay the license fee, they just don't have a license to up to, to to serve liquor, which isn't in their plan it seems to me at this point anyway so i i mean i think we just revert back to our old language and those those companies that choose not to pay the fee just don't have the right to serve liquor until they pay the fee but i don't think that's going to be an impediment to them because i don't see that place reopening anytime soon from the visual no it's certainly not prepared to open tomorrow that's no <laughs> no but I, but I, I agree with Joyce. Let's just go back to the old language. Yeah. And again, okay. people can always come talk with us if they want to. And I, I welcome that. I want to have conversations, but. I agree. It's just I know, noted that they have not reopened and want to know if there right. was any, if we wanted to do anything clearly. No. Right. Right. Currently, they have all the, all their licenses were granted for calendar year 2021. It's just that they have elected not to open. Yeah. So I'd, I'd hear a motion to revert back to the original language. Pre I, I will move, we revert to the original language. I'll second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Me, yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this and I just wanna make sure. Um, that we're all set for fees for, for 2022. Um, these are the fees. That were in place in uh, 2021. Um, last year, Amy did a, a, a survey of, of a joint uh, nearby towns as to what their fees were, and ours were definitely in line, if not higher, than some of the surrounding towns. Um, we can do that again if the board wants, or the board could approve um, uh, these fees if we want to keep the same as uh, 2021. I think I'm okay with keeping the fees where they are. Um, yeah, pe you know, people are recovering from the pandemic. So I mean, think uh, raise and fees might not be um, a great idea now. And it's, it's not a huge source of income for us either. So they don't feel like we have, we, have, we don't have a lot on the line. I don't think to, to need to raise those. I, I would I would agree with that. I would um, agree also. Yeah, the yep. um, Juan Quan is still a six month establishment. They haven't winterized. Last year they came before the board and asked to to extend later into the season to try to make up for some of the business that they lost in the spring, but um, that was just for yeah. Right. For so the plan year. is the plan is for them to maintain a six month schedule. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if they came to us asking for eight months instead of six, I, I think we'd work something out. Absolutely. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the number saying six months and it's cut yeah. in half. So I just making sure. All right. Uh, motion. 
I move that we keep our licensing fees the uh, same as they were for 2021. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Hi. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, we now go to winter maintenance of sidewalks and town buildings for the upcoming 21-22 winter season. Who wants to talk about snow? <clears throat> Nobody. Oh, one. I love the sound. You know, it's a good song. <laughs> snow, snow, you know. Um, so last year, uh, last winter was the first time that we had uh, maintained the sidewalks, the new sidewalks. Um, I went back through our invoices and it cost us $3,000 to do that. Obviously, that was, obviously, we were charged per storm. Um, and it was done by a uh, private individual. The town did not do that. And we also hired out um, snow uh, snow clearing at the town buildings. Um, mm -hmm. So it's something that we need to start thinking about again. I I think we're in the same we're in the same circumstances as we were last year. We don't really have equipment to do the sidewalks. Um, and in terms of town buildings, um, we don't have a, a full time custodian that could do it. Um, mm -hmm. And we run into timing issues with if we were to ask our highway crew to do it are several people that we have are usually out plowing and taking care of the roads. Um, so I thought it worked out pretty well last year. Um, I think town buildings, snow clearing was just, o just over uh, $2,900. So all in all, it was, it was about six grand for, for winter maintenance for the, the sidewalks and the town buildings. Um, I don't really see a reason to change that. And I don't, and, and Keith doesn't, either but i just wanted to hmm. get the my, my only question is were, were there any complaints about either service i don't believe so no okay um, I, I vaguely recall that there may have been one about 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 some ice on the sidewalks um but i i, I think that may have just been one um and that's something that we're always going to deal with in terms of snow melt and refreeze which everybody everybody deals with. So, yeah. If there's no general dissatisfaction with the service, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that does not require a vote. I do not believe. Nope. So we will go to. Uh, we do need to vote on <coughs> the replacement municipal assistance grant that we received from uh, Fish and Wildlife for fifty-seven thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. Right. So this is. Too bad we can't uh, move this money for the design of the bridge. But anyways, placement bridge. So this is a culvert um, that's uh, between Castaways and uh, uh, the Zawinski's house or the fire station there. Um, the brook runs under the road there. And we applied for a culvert replacement. Culvert replacement municipal assistance grant for the um, some data collection and some engineering to replace that. Um, that's another culvert that's, um, old and it's starting to subside and the roadway starting, starting to subside. Um, so it needs to be replaced and we were able to get the, at least the design money, uh, to do that. So, um, it's through the, through fish and wildlife, through the, uh, department of ecological restoration, because it, it's, a uh, believe it or not, it's a cold water fisheries brook and it has some. Um, rare or threatened species that are downstream. So um, it was a competitive application. It's uh, the project itself was the culvert replacement project while itself was probably pretty standard, just the, the way that the brook runs under the, under the road. And then it runs under uh, state road uh, going towards the mill river. And now we're dealing with uh mass DOT jurisdiction and we all know the intersection isn't the greatest in terms of lines of sight and um, how it kind of dips down when, it, when, when you hit the intersection there um, and how there, there historically there has been some, some safety concerns with that intersection, but um, we have the grant to do the design on our part. So hopefully we can have a conversation with mass DOT and maybe they can do yeah. some on their part for that if they need to replace that culvert on state road 
and it'll it'll only cover the 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 um, engineering. It's only data collection and engineering. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Do we have any idea of the status of that bridge? Like, will that need replacing when the culvert? I, I don't. I can't assume you can just replace the culvert under the bridge without replacing the bridge itself. On the the on um, Christian Lane, the one we're on talking Christian about. Christian Lane. Yeah, it, it'll it'll likely be replaced with well, according to the, the stream crossing standards, it needs to be replaced with a with an open bottom culvert. So it's going to be what people more think of a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, it's in that murky space between calling it a culvert and calling it a bridge. Okay. Right. Yep. And that'll be more money. And that was a good pun. And I didn't hear a single groan. <laughs> okay. We were talking um, inside Joyce. Yeah. You know, okay. You're groaning so inside. Thank you. Thank you. One of the challenges that we have as a, and really all municipalities have is that a lot of the grant money is not um, does not pay for design. So, I mean, the idea here was, is if we could get the engineering funds and get that completed and paid for, we'd be in line for MassWorks grant or the federal infrastructure funding that may or may not ever happen. Mm. Um, 24 hours. So we were, we, we were moving towards shovel ready um, okay. as that term was coined. I think that's great then. I think we should uh, hear a motion to accept this grant. I move we accept the money. I will second culvert. that. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Okay, and we turn to another grant, the Park Grant, Parkland of Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities from EEA at $62,588. Kudos to the grant writers once again for getting that. That's a very competitive grant. Yeah. Um, so this grant is, we submitted it for uh, paving of the Hurley Park driveway um, and striping in the parking lot, hand, uh, striping of the handicapped spaces, installation of a, a sidewalk from the, from the paved driveway parking lot to the existing restrooms concession stand that was one of the items that was raised when the town did a ada uh, self-assessment was that uh there was no access to the restrooms at early he from the parking lot um and a, and, ramp also, the, and a ramp to the to the pavement yep to the cement yep and um we also identified that the restrooms although not fully i mean they were I don't know if you can get pretty close to handicap accessible, but um, they didn't. They don't meet the current standards for mm -hmm. for ADA accessibility. Um, so we also put into um, renovate and, and redo the restrooms, all of the restrooms at at, at Hurley here there, and we need to expand one a little bit to get the space we need for clearance space um, mm -hmm. around some of the fixtures in the bathroom. So it's going to cover that. As well, it's going to cover the, the total uh, renovations to the restrooms, um, the parking lot, driveway, and then the sidewalk to the um, to the concession stand, mm -hmm. pavilion, restrooms. Um, so that was, this was, I mean, this is an example of, of really, you, you need to do the planning up front because to be eligible for this, we needed to have an open space and recreation plan. So how many ever months back, 10 months, 12 months? You know the open space and rec the open space and recreation plan committee. I don't remember what we called open space committee, Jonathan. I think is what we called it. You know, started doing that work twelve months ago, and that's that's really that's really how these things work. Is that you need to get a committee together, you need to do the plan, um, mm -hmm. you do the plan, submit the grant, and then 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 the money comes through. It's mm -hmm. the same with what what the town did with the complete streets. Um, so. I have a quick um, question. Can any of that local share match be in-kind work that our highway department's qualified to do? No, we've, I, oh. we asked, I asked that question. Okay. Um, unfortunately they can't. Um, so, right. So that's one of the things that, that, that I think we need to talk about is, is there is, there is a local share. It's a, you know, it's a reimbursement grant and there's different 
there's, there's a formula that determines how much they're going to reimburse. And they'll reimburse 58% of the, the total project cost, which was estimated at a little bit over $110,000. So um, it's an expense for the town, but I think it's an expense that that eventually it's, it's something that the town's going to have to invest in um, for all the reasons why we submitted the grant in terms of the parking lot in really rough shape and it's just not safe. Um, so, I mean, even the cost of the parking lot is, is the cost of the parking lot is greater than what we would pay for the local share. So yeah. well, and, we pay handicap compliance is handicap compliance and yeah. it's the right thing to do right. and shame on us for not having done it already. Yeah. Um, to get that local match though, that's something we have not yet um, approved at a town meeting or appropriated. Um, so that right. I assume is one of the reasons why we'd want to have a special town meeting soon, which I know is the next agenda item. Yeah. Yep. Um, so if, if we think we should go forward with this, basically that's going to be a, a nice segue to the next item. And we would put a, an article on that special town meeting to appropriate the roughly 45 K that would be needed. Is that, am I right about that? Um, yes, really close. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the appropriation, one of the requirements of the grant is that the appropriation be for the entire amount. The entire oh. amount of the project and that it would be um we would be reimbursed the the grant amount um so yes we're we're we're, we're incurring the expense of the forty five thousand, but on paper it needs to show that that we have the whole amount um, well, okay. fortunately this is why we have a a a, uh, a capital yeah sustainability fund Yep, and it, this was one of the items. This this item was placed on the, I think we put it on the capital improvement plan last year. I think Jonathan and I had some discussions about it, um, and we had we had Keith estimate what those costs would be. Um, okay, I, I I'd hear a motion to accept this grant. I move we accept the grant. I second it. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me, yes. Okay, and the last thing on the list is special town meeting dates. Yeah, so, and, and just, I'll, I'll just quickly run down items that I think we may need to talk about or, or maybe covered at the special town meeting. Um, I think, as far as I know, this, the CPC is holding a, a public hearing on, a, on, a, on an appropriation to something with the ice rink, right, Jonathan? Yeah, it's a small one just to expand the size of the ice rink and give it some lighting. It was it was a pretty wide, um, popular event, uh, popular option for people last year. And um, adding to size, um, which also adds to safety because it's corners instead of 90 foot or 90 degree uh, corners. Uh, also, we're gonna add a, a, a small rink for only um, essentially toddlers to, you know, five years old. So they're not in the same rink with, uh, with other people and we're adding lighting. And so it's a pretty small thing, but it's very cool. Yeah. Where is that located again? Between the highway garage and the, um, what do you call it? The fire station. Okay. I mean, it was very, it was very popular last year and with lights, it's going to be even more popular. Mm. Yeah. Well, I hope that get. I hope that happens. So, um, do you have some dates to toss out, Brian? Um, I was hoping to, but I don't have them confirmed with with uh, Amy or Mr. Moderator yet. So, um, mm -hmm. in terms of timing, I was I was thinking probably early November. Um, just in terms of looking at 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 what we need to get done. Um, so I will be in touch about those, those dates. Okay. Um, but I, I did want to talk about sort of preference. Um, I mean, right now we don't have in-person meetings, but special town meeting will need to be in person. There's not, mm -hmm. there's not an, there's not, there's no longer an exemption. Um, mm -hmm. so whether we have it on a Saturday morning or well, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, um, we could try to have one. Um, 
in location too. Are we going to, we could have it outside. We could have it inside. Um, mm. I thought the one we did um, outside at, um, at four Sandy lane was actually fine. I mean, there's short meetings. So even if it's raining, we can have umbrellas and things like that. Um, I thought that actually worked out okay. And I think it's less disruptive to the staff like you and, and Amy to be, have to be there and with all the things you need to just have it right there is, is fine. Um, if we were required, if we, if the weather was so bad that we had to take it indoors, um, we do have that big meeting room and we could do it masked, I suppose, because that's our rule at the moment is that indoors is, is masked. So I, I guess, I, you know, there, there is a risk we'd have to bring it indoors, but why not, you know, early November in the morning is not necessarily all that cold. It could still be outdoors. Right. Late October, early November. Yeah. I mean, if people can go trick or treating, it's, you know, warm enough for trick or treating. It's warm enough for a, a half hour. Hmm. Yeah. 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 So are we thinking, uh, prob so probably a Saturday then? Saturday. That seems reasonable. I think it's Saturday more even available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, I would I would say if you can get it done by the end of October, that would be ideal. But if you can't, you can't. Yeah. Um, but I know that I would I would prefer to have it scheduled sooner rather than later, so that I can work around. <clears throat> that schedule yeah I'll, I'll i'll reach out i'll reach out to amy and nat okay all right um what else do you have Mac? uh geez brian town administrator updates uh speed study was initiated on conway road i reached out to furcog then mass dot and furcog and furcog has offered to do um, pretty much all the data collection for us that we need. Um, so we'll see what we get um, in terms of results, in terms of the speed study, and make a decision if we want to go forward with uh, posting Conway Road. So that, that's in the works. Um, Shaw Perry versus the town of Waitley. Um, quite honestly, I when I saw the letter, I thought this was something new. Um, it's about a 15 year old land court case um, that is going to be dismissed. So mm. that's good. Um, I had to ask Lynn what this was even about because it has been dormant for about 15 years. So um, I talked, touched on this earlier. Franklin Tech School Bargaining Representative meeting is October 5th. Um, MVP designation has been achieved for the town of Waitley. Again, this is one of those. This is that same process, right? Get a committee together, put together a plan, and then get your plan approved, and then you can apply for grants to do what's in your plan. So um, MVP action grants, the next round will be this spring. So this is possibly one of the fundings for uh, culvert replacement or bridge or bridge engineering, but um, we'll have to see. Um, Thank you to everybody who made that plan happen. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, my risk management grant program, that's the workplace safety grant that we usually get. It's, it's an equipment grant. It's pretty small. It's under, I think it's under $10,000. Um, so, um, I'll solicit ideas from department heads and see what they want to see what we want to apply for. Um, food clinic in Deerfield. Uh, this is a drive up clinic. Uh, that's tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning. Uh, there's information on the town website. So this is a flu clinic. Um, there's a mobile COVID-19 vaccine clinic at Frontier High School, um, October 1st, 21st. So if anyone is looking for a local place to get a COVID vaccine, this is an opportunity to do that. Again, uh, there's information on the town's website. Um, source to see cleanup. That's when a bunch of volunteers go down into Sugarloaf Brook um, at Hurley Park and bring up a bunch of trash. Um, and I did that this past Saturday. There's an email from, uh, Rick, Rick Rosling. I don't want, I'm going to butcher his name. Um, 
anyways, they pulled out a pulled out you know a bunch of trash from the, the ravine down there, and luckily it's not new trash. It's just junk that's accumulated in there over many many years. But I think they actually pulled out a a, a full trailer from <laughs> from the underbrush there, an old trailer. Um, it's Ronald amazing Gray. that they continue to find new stuff because they do it year after year after year, and they still find the stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I wonder if the trailer Ronald just like Rose. washed down the river from some other place during a big storm or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's an old rusty yeah. trailer that I, I don't know. Um, uh, Centertown pumping station. So the easement has been, so the easement has been signed. It's being recorded. Um, special permit has been granted. So um, the water department has initiated the borrowing. Uh, they were authorized to borrow two hundred thousand dollars to do the project. Uh, that's in the works now, so the select board will be asked to sign uh, those documents at the next meeting. Um, so that should be well underway. Um, we're on track to well, I should say they're on track or we're on track. Everybody's in it together. Um, they should be able to get the building up and the building off will set before you know before winter comes. So um, I know that the the skid unit that the pump comes on has been ordered. I don't think it was delivered. Maybe it has. I think Wayne said maybe today or tomorrow. Um, so that's going to be moving ahead fairly quickly because um, they've had approval. We have land use approval, mass DEP approval, um, obviously landowner approval with the easement uh, from Quanquant. So um, hopefully by you know next spring, the change, the actual you know changeover will happen. Let's see. Um, center school site visit. So this happened on the 20th of September. We had, Keith and I had uh, probably six to eight. Um, there's a couple more individuals, but they were together. Probably six to eight interested parties. Uh, we walked around the school. They asked questions. We went, uh, we uh, took people to the school. Um, there seemed to be a lot of interest in it. I've had some 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 telephone conversations with a couple other people since then, um, but there there does seem to be genuine interest in the school. No one's no one's you know nobody really talked in detail about what their what their plans would be. Um, those are the letters of interest are due October twenty fifth. So I'm I'm actually by nature I'm pessimistic, but I'm actually fairly optimistic that that something good will happen here. So um, that was encouraging. So, cool. Great. That's great news. Yeah. Um, I think that's all I have. Yeah. Um, and, and I just want to, I don't think we've ever talked about this formally, but um, people should be aware that Waitley is the home of two charging stations at the park and ride uh, off of the old exit 24 that are live uh, courtesy of mass DOT and Eversource. So um just another reason to, to, to use that, that park and ride. Um, and it's hopefully a snowball effect that we'll get more and more charging stations um, in Waitley and in surrounding communities over the next months and years. Um, but please take advantage of it. And there's a picture of it right there. They are. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. And they're level two, they're level two charging stations. Mm. So. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I you know, if you if you if you park there and you commute into Springfield or Hartford, guess what? You can be charged up by the time you uh, come yeah. home from work. There's four, four, four plugs. Is that what they're called? Outputs, mm. plugs. Yeah, four stations. Great. Four Which stations. Twenty first century kind of stuff. So, all right, that's all I've got. Anybody want to add anything before we close this meeting? Nope, I got nothing. I'm good. Okay. Um, I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Yes. That's it.